What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hickory Scuba Marine and today we're going to talk about decompression sickness and what actually causes decompression sickness. We're going to look at two things. We're going to look at Boyle's Law and Henry's Law, how they coincide and how they can affect whether or not you get decompression sickness. And then we're going to go outside. I've got a special guest with me today. I've got my six-year-old little girl, Tessa. She's going to show us a great little experiment of how we can visualize what's happening during decompression sickness. So the two things I want to review real quick before we do that, of course, is Boyle's Law and Henry's Law. It's the two different types of physics law that causes decompression sickness. So we need a good, thorough understanding of what's happening to our bodies, how the physics or the physiology of our bodies works with the physics, and then we can go outside and show you a representation. So basically Boyle's Law, we understand, deals with pressure and volume. And we understand that each one is invertedly related, if you will, or inversely related with the other. If I increase one, I have to decrease the other one and vice versa. If I increase this one, then of course I got to decrease that one. And so this chart right here, and you've probably seen this in your open water class. And so basically what is happening is if I got a balloon, let's say I inflate a balloon up, as I descend down in the water column, I'm increasing pressure. There's more, more um, water surrounding me, and that, of course that water weighs more than what the surface air does, so I'm increasing weight, increasing pressure, and all these little air molecules are getting more and more dense, so basically the balloon shrinks in size, and this can be your equipment, this can be your lungs, it can be anything of that sort. And as I go deeper and deeper and deeper, those air molecules become more dense, and they shrink in size. And that's the first part of Boyle's Law. We're going to come back to the second part here in a second. So let's take a quick look at how our body operates or the physiology of our body is, is in regards to Henry's Law. Because Henry's Law deals with absorption of gases. And if I can compare it with Boyle's Law or put it together, as I descend into water column, any air molecule is going to decrease in size or change its volume, shrink its volume, if you will, because of the pressure pushing in on it. So if I start to increase pressure on my body, the nitrogen bubbles that are basically sitting in my lungs every time I breathe, they're going to start to compress. They're going to get smaller and smaller. The volume of them is going to change. And as they compress, what will actually happen is, is I will start to absorb them into my body's tissues, sometimes called solution. In your body's tissues, we have what's called fast tissues and slow tissues. Fast absorb quicker than the slow does and vice versa. So as I start to absorb those nitrogen molecules, what I want to be cautious of is not to overabsorb or become what's called super saturated. If I take on too much nitrogen inside of my body's tissues, I will have absolutely no room to diffuse the oxygen that's flowing through my blood. So I want to make sure I don't super saturate. All right. So now let's reverse the procedure. Let's come back over here for a second. Let's say that I've I've took a breath or I've got that balloon down here to say at a depth of 40 meters and as I fill it up if you will since I'm at a depth of 40 meters which we understand is of course five atmospheres that balloon is going to be the exact same size of what it was at the surface all right it's going to be maximum in size that it's going to be reach its maximum capacity however the volume of it is actually going to change because now I have five times the amount of air inside that balloon to reach the exact same size of what it was at the surface. That's because there, it takes five times as much air or molecules inside there to fill it up. So it, and theoretically it looks like it's the same size, but in reality it's got more air molecules in it because it took that much more to fill it up. Well now, if I look at pressure and volume again, I understand that if I decrease pressure, then of course volume will increase. So as I swim up to the surface, what do you think is going to happen to that balloon? It's going to begin to increase in size. And unfortunately, if I don't let some of that air out, of course it's going to overexpand and pop. And this is the golden rule in scuba of why we never hold our breath. This is what's happening. Now let's go back to Henry's Law and see how off-gassing works with Boyle's Law. As I start to decrease the pressure, meaning I'm swimming up from the bottom to the surface, and as I decrease the pressure, these bubbles will start to come back out of the solution, if you will. Now, over time, I'm going to actually retain some of it. And this is what we call residual nitrogen. This is the biggest reason why we must dive using either a dive computer or plan the dives with the tables, because we need to understand how much nitrogen is still left in our body, which we call residual. So that is the basic on-gassing and on-gassing process while scuba diving. Think of this part here is your body. That's what's happening to your body. 
Think of this part here as the why, why it happens to your body. So let's take a quick look though at decompression sickness and then I'll take you outside and show you a prime example of exactly what happens during decompression sickness. So the biggest thing about decompression sickness is a super saturated body tissue, if you will. Meaning I have oversaturated my body with nitrogen to where there's absolutely no room for oxygen diffusion or metabolization, whatever you want to call it, meaning there's no room for oxygen to get inside the body to fuel it, if you will, and I've pretty much just oversaturated myself with nitrogen. And this comes from several different things. Either one, you've went too deep, or two, you've stayed too long at depth. And so, once again, we use the computers and tables to help us prevent that. But once I've supersaturated my body, if you will, I have no room for oxygen diffusion. So as I come up, it doesn't really matter if you're coming up slow or fast at this point, those bubbles are not going to be able to naturally come out and back into your uh, airway, if you will, back into your lungs so you can exhale. What they're going to start doing is actually expanding within the tissue itself instead of coming back out. And as that happens, we get decompression sickness. Now, decompression sickness sometimes is called the bends. And the reason is, is these molecules, these nitrogen molecules, as they expand within your body system, it can be in your joints, maybe in your hips, and it causes excruciating pain. And what happens is it makes you bend over. And that's why we nickname decompression sickness the bends. But basically, that is what's happening, is as I come up, pressure decreases, so the volume of gas starts to expand. And of course, if I'm super saturated, it's not going to come back out of the solution, if you will, back into the lungs to exhale. It's just going to expand in those bodies' tissues. So guys, that's Boyle's Law and Henry's Law 101. That's how it works. Let's put these two together. We're going to head outside. My six-year-old is actually setting up an experiment for us, and we're going to take a, we'll take a look at, at what decompression sickness actually looks like inside the body. So let's head outside. All right, guys, so I got my little six-year-old. This is Tessa. Tell everybody, hey, Tessa. Hey. <laughs> and what she's going to do is she's going to show us a representation of exactly what happens during decompression sickness. So, Tessa, tell everybody what this Coke bottle is. This Coke bottle is our body. It's our bodies. And what happens when we go scuba diving? Show, show us what happens with the bottle. We shake it up, right? And so what's happening, keep shaking it up, baby. What's happening is, is we're increasing pressure on our body. And if she stops temporarily, if you zoom in here, you'll be able to see that there's a lot of bubbles that's formed. And those bubbles is actually what's absorbing into your body. And we call that on gassing. So she keep on shaking it up. Shake it hard. And so the deeper we go, the longer we stay down, that's exactly what's happening. We're on gassing some more and more nitrogen. So let's get it really, really big here. And so one of the reasons that we want to come up slowly is tell what everybody what happens if we come up too fast. If we come up too fast, it will explode. That's right. That means that nitrogen is just going to basically rip through our system real quick, and that's what causes decompression sickness. So come over here, and we'll show everybody what decompression sickness looks like. You ready? All right, on the count of three, we're going to open it. And this, would to, <laughs> this is going to simulate that you went to a certain depth, you stayed for a certain amount of time, and you've had a, a faster than normal ascent rate. Are you ready? One, two, three, here it goes. Ah! And so basically, that is decompression sickness right there. We've absorbed nitrogen bubbles, we've supersaturated ourselves with it, and as we decrease the pressure, if we remember from Boyle's Law, we decrease the pressure rapidly, so that means all that volume of gas or all that volume of nitrogen came out of the solution too fast, if you will. It didn't uh, deabsorb, if you will, back into your lungs. So let's take a quick look of how we can prevent decompression sickness during our dive. First of all, we never want to go too deep and we never want to stay outside the recreational limits. Now, tech divers, we do things a little bit different, but for recreational standpoints, basically, what we want to do is make sure we stay within recreational limits. And then on our way up, we want to make slow, slow ascent rates. We never want to ascend, you know, more than a foot every two seconds. So as you can see, I'm increasing the pressure. I'm making my dive. Well, during my ascent, I want to make a slow, safe ascent. I want to make sure that I stop during my safety stop. And as long as I come up slow enough, that nitrogen will slowly come out of the solution, but it will go back into my lungs to where I can actually exhale it out, and it won't just expand. Now I'm going to make a quick stop, a safety stop, if you will, at 15 feet for three minutes. And then at the end of that safety stop, I can slowly make my ascent. 
without developing decompression sickness. So guys, in a nutshell, that is decompression sickness. It's how Boyle's Law and Henry's Law works together. We want to make sure that we never go too deep. We never stay too long. We always make a slow, safe ascent. Always do safety stops. And guys, what's the number one rule? Don't hold your breath and scoop it now. That's right. Always breathe, guys. I really appreciate you watching this video. Do me a big favor. If you think Tessa did a good job explaining decompression sickness, simply hit that like button for me. Share this with all your friends and your families. If you got kids in your family that's maybe they're taking scuba, but they're having a little bit of difficulty understanding the physics, share this video with them and hopefully it'll help them out. Guys, as always, make sure you follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Like us on Facebook. Pin us on Pinterest. Subscribe to us here on YouTube. And as always, guys, we appreciate your business. See you next time. Guys, we really appreciate you watching our videos. If you liked it, make sure to give us a big thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, simply hit that subscriber button for us and make sure you hit the little bell to turn on all notifications. If you want to see some other cool videos, make sure to click these links here. They could be scuba tips, they could be diving videos, search and recovery videos, or gear reviews. Once again, guys, we really appreciate it.